My father was like, wanted to do a documentary on one little village where everybody was living 20, 25 years longer than the people around it. My older brothers, Tony and Joey, were 13 and 11. They were like, oh, we're going. You know, so my dad was like, of course. I was like, I want to go on this trip. Are you kidding me? And they were like, no, you're, you know, we don't want to babysit your little seven-year-old butt. You know, we want to go and have fun ourselves. The storm's up there in Nari Lake. We even experienced pilots. Bad things happen. They were flying along the edge of those mountains. I think a storm would come in. There's just a couple of the fingers protrude a little further out. Once they did find the plane crash, they went up there, pulled the bodies out, and then we had friends that went up and went through the crash site. Right. How nuts is that, man? The heat burned it. It's so only one part of the, one side of the plane burned. You know, I think maybe losing my dad and brothers maybe instilled something I wanted to protect what I did have left. And that was just instilled in me at a young age, wanting to be a provider, wanting to, you know, be a protector. sit there consciously and go, okay, I'm gonna join because I wanna protect my mom and sister, but I think that's definitely was in there somewhere. But I wanted to be in the SEAL team since sixth, seventh grade. I have a book that my mom's cousin gave me. I always enjoyed the water as well, so I was like, well, if you look where the Army bases are, it sucks. Like, you know what I mean? Like, look where the Navy bases are, they're on the coasts. All right, even better. Part of that probably is I was just such a boy growing up and everything's a spear or a knife or a gun, right? You like literally go to the yard and you look for pieces like pine branches that you can put against your shoulder and hold as a gun. When you're hunting, let's say everything else fails but your gun, hey, you, you probably live. Why not be a good steward of the land? Why not be a good hunter? Why not be the best you can be at anything? One, challenge yourself to be better, faster, stronger. It's more ethical to be that way. You wanna be better, faster, stronger. You wanna bring that, that animal back. You wanna bring that meat home. You wanna provide. You wanna get the animal. If you work really hard and you don't accomplish, you have you to blame, you know what I mean? And it's a bummer. Part of being responsible is also n not just sh shooting when you know you should. Right? That's the integrity side of it. You want to be honorable. Like you don't want to blow the leg off an animal and get away. You should probably feel bad. Like maybe you're you have integrity. Maybe you have honor because you feel bad for taking this life, but in the right way and respectful way. And you're using the meat. You're the one doing it. You're, you're, the animal is giving you sustenance. You're cooking for your friends, your family. You're honoring that thing's life. My driving force is just that I want to provide something good and better for those I love and I care about. You know, I lost brothers and I replaced them with my buddies in the SEAL teams. Same buddies I have to this day. You know, some of the guys I served with are my best friends to this day. And then if you have lost buddies, you know, when you are home, like you want to watch out for what you have left here. You want to watch out for your buddy's kids. There's all these foundations, stuff like that, that does that. And you always want to check in and make sure they're doing good. You get to earn the right to be like, I'm a protector, which is, you know, you have an honor in that too. And, and you know, that protecting thing doesn't really flow over into the hunting aspect, but I think being a provider does.
it's not really for the adrenaline of it. I, I enjoy being out in nature because you're way more insignificant. You're part of it. It's great for mental health and peace. You know what I mean? Your focus is there. Your focus is nature, right? It's super beautiful out there. You're tiny. Nobody out there is fucking cool. So I mean, my first elk uh, with a rifle was with one of my best friends in the world, Jeff Wobig. Had to have been around 2015. And he's looking across, you know, the canyon, looks like a mile away. And he's like, oh, there's two over there. And I was like, okay, dude. He's like, do you want to try? And I was like, sure, dude. Like, is your gun dialed in? He's like, yeah, of course. Get on him and sit and breathe it, you know, breathe out, hold. And I could see, and I got my second sight picture before the round hit. And I could see that round hit, you know, right, like a little above the heart, right up here, double lung. And he kind of tensed up and it kind of stumbled back and just stood there, you know, and I was like, he's like, shoot it again. You know, I was like, oh, what? One shot, one kill, dude. Shoot it again, you know, and I'm like, all right. We sat and watched it for like 10 minutes, you know, and it wasn't moving. And he's like, you know, problem is they'll, they'll fall down and you'll leave the area, especially that far. You'll get there and you'll never find it. It'll go up and it'll only move a hundred yards and good luck in that brush. So we, we looked at the area and we kind of pinpointed like tree, that color is different than the rest. Like memorize, 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 go down, get across, go up. We found it. And of course it's my first one. I'm so stoked. Gotta have every picture, every angle. And then I want a shoulder mount. And he's like, of course, we're gonna do it. We gotta drag it out of here, you know? And uh, just start dragging it down that hill and it was miserable. It was a good two, two plus hours downhill. Just, I don't know, I guess miserable. Being miserable with your friend is pretty fun. That's maybe part of the reason it's fun too, is that you're out with your buddies. It's just you, you're, you're hunting animals. Like you're out there cruising through the creek, you're being sneaky, you're trying to find these animals. Like, it also equates back to when you're a kid and you have a stick gun, but now you're legit. necessity of me hunting and using knives all the time. I just knew what I wanted, knew what I liked. I figured I might as well make my own and make some for my SEAL buddies and my outdoor, you know, my buddies who hunt and stuff like that. Making tools and being able to use the tools uh, that you made to take care of oneself and those around them. You know, I think that stuck with me. And then from there, you know, me growing up looking and reading up on Native American culture and those who carved America out with their own two hands, and that just always was a very attractive thing. Me growing up, it's something I really loved and interested in, wanted to make sure that if I needed to, I was capable of, of doing the same things. I feel like everybody has another side that you don't know until you get to know them much more deeply. You don't show your, all your cards at once. That was kind of the idea behind Half Face Blades. And then in Afghanistan, I would paint my face on ops a lot of times halfway across and then have a half, you know, half of my face is black. If you can't always kill them, you can at least scare them. Learn your equipment, learn your tool. People carry way too much in general, but if you carry the right stuff, you don't have to carry as much. You can run lighter. Whether it's hunting, whether it's camping, whether it's going on missions overseas, right? You want the best equipment, you want the best tools. 
Christians in Arms, they make, you know, obviously very high-end outdoor uh, weapons and guns and rifles. I chose a knife that is one of my favorite knives that I designed. Little under nine inches, has a four inch blade. I think it's the perfect size for an outdoorsman. A purpose driven tool. Depending on your walk in life, you're gonna choose that tool. And I want it to be a part of you, an extension of you, and I want it to work. And then I want to be the person behind that tool that makes sure you're good, makes sure you provide more sure you're taken care of. I really go from the end user and then design to the end user again. I think it's grand that people know that they're so not grand and they're so little and that better drive them to make some kind of difference. Are you making those that are greater than you proud? Are you gonna be able to, you know, walk in front of some judgment one day and be like, hey, you know, you feel ashamed of your life in general because you let those that you love down. In the little life you have, can you make a big difference? Can you make change? You could definitely make change in your own life for the better. Take all this away. What was it back in the day? You know, you're hunting, fishing, you're providing, growing and it was all good for you and it was natural and that's what people's jobs were, right? So maybe getting back to that little basic, little bit of your life, the little few weeks here and there, you get to do that again. Maybe subconsciously it brings you back to like square one and what it does for you mentally, it kind of resets you. Know?